Eating Michelin starred food is a rich man's game. You're paying for the service, you're paying for the food, you're paying for the building. It's all very expensive. But you can make Michelin starred recipes at home with books like Historic Heston. Over there. Three star chef from Gordon Ramsay. Thomas Keller's books. There's lots of books from Michelin starred chefs. They'll tell you exactly how they did it. You can then recreate it at home. These things usually require masses of equipment, expensive equipment you're probably never going to use again, and usually exceptional ingredients. You might have seen me make Heston Blumenthal's signature meat fruit before, as served in his dinner by Heston restaurant in Knightsbridge. It uh, didn't go that well, to be honest. Um, it was not well shaped, and I wasn't crazy about the flavour. It wasn't my favourite thing I've ever eaten. So if you don't know, Heston Blumenthal's meat fruit is one of his favourite things, a trompe l'oeil. It looks like one thing, it's actually something else. And it's a play on a medieval centrepiece. And it looks like an orange, but cut it open, it's actually pâté in disguise. So making this at home, using the historic Heston method, involves things like uh, simmering down chicken livers with cream and butter, uh, infusing uh, onions with Madeira and port, taking mandarins, crushing them, pureeing them, simmering them with gelatin, and setting it all to exact specifying temperatures, sous vide bags galore. It's not the most difficult recipe, but it's not easy either. And it takes a long time to get it done. So I wondered, can we make the Heston Blumenthal meat fruit, but cheaper, and where cheaper than Aldi? European discounter with waves of stores across the UK with a new one opening approximately every 4.6 seconds by my reckoning, might be able to provide us with what we need. So I popped along to my local Aldi. However, things took a turn. I was hoping I would be able to find some livers to make the pate. I was a bit surprised but not surprised that they don't sell liver, or certainly not on the day that I went in my branch. I was stuck really at stage one, but I thought, let's try their pre-made pâté. And rather than faff about with, you know, real fruit and leaf gelatin and all that stuff, let's use ready-made jelly. So this pâté cost me 69 pence for 175 grams. I've never tried it before. I'm sure it's delicious. And the jelly at 85 pence for 135 grams. Um, tablet or block jelly. Um, I don't know if you have this where you live. Uh, it's certainly the jelly I recognise growing up that you would have it as a, as a dessert at a kid's party. Essentially you get a load of cubes, you dissolve them in a mixture of boiling and cool water, stir it, set in the fridge for a few hours. Um, if I make it according to the instructions, it's not going to be viscous enough. It's not going to really hold that colour. So first step, work out how strong, how dilute the jelly needs to be. And I bought a few so we can have a few tests. So I've scooped out some of my pate into these small silicone mould that I have. Um, just little testy ones that I can use. A bit like an ice cube tray really. And it allows me to get small amounts of pate snipped my jelly into three cubes into three containers, then I could test it at different dilutions. One with twice the amount of water to jelly, one with the same weight of water to jelly, and one with half the amount. Get it thoroughly mixed, let it cool to about 30 degrees, which is where the jelly is viscous enough that it will stick to the pâté that's been in the freezer. Then dipping my little pâté nuggets into my jelly mix, giving it a good coating, repeating that across all three of my samples and then I'll impale them onto a cardboard or paper cup and that will allow them to sort of stay suspended. I'll pop these back in the fridge for about an hour um, so that the jelly sets around the outside. I didn't get great footage of them coming out but trust me when the one that came out at 50% water to the weight of the jelly actually gave a really nice finish. Let's see how it impacts the final meat fruit that I make. So having tested jellies at various concentrations and dilutions, I think we've settled on the right mix that's going to make our jelly set and form a nice film around our pate. Now, to fill, after doing our testers, let's do our actual mould. So just taking our pate. I'm going to be quite generous, but actually I'm not going to fill it all the way to the top. I've used these moulds before and if you fill it all the way to the top you get slightly more than a sphere, if you know what I mean, by the time you put them together. I 
and that's now ready for the freezer. That needs to go in the freezer for at least three hours, maybe a little longer, just so it can go completely solid. So we've worked out our ratio of water to jelly. However, because we're using such a small amount of water relative to the amount of jelly, it's actually quite tricky um, to get it to dissolve completely. So I've got mine over the hob. In here I've got 70 grams of jelly cubes, about 35 of boiling water. I'm setting it over a low heat. I'm just gonna stir until completely dissolved. Please be careful because the mixture is more viscous than it appears and it wants to splash like mad. So usually when you make up jelly from the packet like this, you've got boiling water, cold water, there's plenty of liquid to solid ratio and it, and it all dissolves. But because of the way we're working, because we want that really hard set, which in the traditional method, you use the right amount of gelatin to water, but we're not doing that today. We're just using tablet jelly. We need to encourage it a bit. I think we're done. I'm gonna decant it to a plastic cup, which will just help it cool down quicker and will be more convenient for my basting. So I've got this tall jug that came with my blender, my stick blender, um, so that it's nice and tall. It means the liquid will sit around the bottom. So it's boiling at the moment, so I'm just gonna leave this to sit, to cool slightly. And when it gets near the right temperature, I'll get my pate out of the freezer. So while that cools down, we're going to reassemble our pâté halves into a spherical shape to look like an orange. For that, I'm going to use a blowtorch. Uh, we're gonna use this just to melt the surface so we can glue them together, make a whole sphere. It doesn't have to be as industrial as this. It could be you just put them on a hot frying pan just quickly, just to slightly melt the surface, just to glue it. Um, you could do that too. So let's pop these out along with a little spare I created from some leftover pâté. And then you'll also need uh, some sort of stick. A toothpick will be too delicate and won't hold it up. Um, I'd also recommend you get yourself a paper cup and that can act as a stand. You could also use a piece of polystyrene if you've got a piece of packaging material in the garage from something you ordered. So I'm just gonna use this stick and combine it together. it's just a really quick blast that's it so we're just going to bind that together and then just with the heat of my hand it's going to smooth over the seam Now the worst thing that would happen is some jelly will seep into the interior if the seam's not done, so it's not terrible. Um, it's just an aesthetics thing. I'm also going to just lightly, with the heat of my hand again, just roll my hand over the surface just to smooth out some cracks. It will also mean your fingers absolutely reek of pâté. So at this stage, I'd recommend you pop it back in the freezer for a few more minutes just to reset that center section. The cocktail stick fell out at this point, so I changed my mind. You can't quite see it, I'll come back to it later, but I've inserted a pastry nozzle, just a metal cone that you get with pastry bags um, into the bottom of the meat fruit to hold it upright. So once my jelly has hit 30 degrees C. I'm then going to dip my meat fruit into the mixture, get it well coated and then pop it back in the fridge for one minute just to set the outside very quickly, then back into the mixture, back in the fridge. Repeating this about two or three times until I'm really happy with the coating. So we have blended our jelly, we have smoothed out our pate, we've fridged, we've frozen, we've defrosted, and now we are ready to try. Let's see how the final product came out. A 
let's cut this open and you can have a closer look. So here we have our finished meat fruit jelly, slightly thicker than I would like, but I wanted to dunk it three or four times to get a really nice, smooth, fun finish on it. Um, I've added the bay leaf straight from the garden just for fun, and I think it looks really appetising and a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm really pleased with the look of it. Um, I think it's more uh, transparent than I was expecting, but that's a consequence of having uh, no control over the jelly whatsoever. So this is exactly what it is. I don't know Aldi's processes, but I'm willing to bet you try this at a different time of year and the orange color would look different again because it's probably based on whatever the factory's doing that given week or month. But I think it's come out better than the one I did following the real authentic Heston recipe. Let's give it a taste. So I'm just using a bit of Tesco sourdough here. I'm not including that in my overall recipe. You use whatever bread you want, as to smart price, or a, bake, a loaf from Gail's Bakery at 10 quid, whatever you want. Um, this is just Tesco sourdough that I really like. I'm astonished how good that tastes, really. Considering what we're working with. Um, it's, a, it's a very uniform and fine pate. I'm sure you've all had cheap, smooth pâtés from the supermarket before. It tastes like one of those. But combined with that bitterness, it's not quite as sweet as I was expecting, like a marmalade consistency uh, of that jelly. It's fantastic, it's really, really enjoyable. And it looks incredible too. Um, it's a bit of work, as a lot of these recipes are. But nothing impossible. Smush something into a mould. The mould is the hardest thing that you might not already have if you don't do uh, any baking and that sort of thing. But you can put it into any ice cube tray, though the difficulty you're gonna have is getting it out. You're gonna need something silicone so you can pop it out. Um, but they're really cheaply available from um, all the pound shops and discount shops in your town. Um, various sizes. I've got one that's tiny, sort of cherry sized, as well as this slightly bigger one. Um, and I'd recommend slightly underfilling it so that you get a better sphere that goes together. Um, and then in crucially, making sure that jelly is mixed at a 50% water to jelly ratio. Blend it over the hob, cool it down to 30 degrees. Once it hits 30 degrees, get active. Start dipping that fruit pate bomb into the jelly mixture. Get it out, fridge it for a minute, put it back in again, minute, do that two or three times till you're satisfied with the coating. It's nice and smooth. And I'm really pleased that I thought of putting a piping nozzle underneath as that is a really good way to keep it stable. And it's on the bottom of the fruit, so you're not ruining the appearance of it. Um, so if you've got a little fun party coming up or you just want to surprise some people or you just fancy experimenting, I'd recommend giving it a go. The Hester method is really interesting and fascinating, but actually I think I enjoyed this more. I wasn't crazy about the pate flavour. Let's look at the price. Uh, Aldi jelly cost 85p and the pate cost 69 pence. I'd say that the uh, meat fruit that I've made is a single serving, well, it probably serves two actually as a starter uh, for a decent uh, dinner and I used about half of both. So that makes each meat fruit worth about 70, um, cost about 77 pence, you know, or or 38 and a half P per serving, which is pretty crackers when you think about it. At Dinner by Heston, the moot fruit is charged at 26 pounds. I'm not saying they can equate at all. I've never had it, but I'm sure from people I've heard, it's a smooth, luxurious, tasty thing. Plus you've got quite a lot of hours spent preparing it and storing it. And that's just part of the premium you pay um, for both the chef and the setting for the Mandarin Hotel. But as a fun experiment at home, this was great. And if you'd like to see me do more of these Michelin recipes on a budget, please let me know in the comments down below what I should tackle next. If you want to see my other attempt at meat fruit, it'll be up there. And if you want to see other Heston recipes, they're down there. I'm going to eat this. I'll catch you next time.